Hey everyone, welcome aboard. Today we're going to be exploring the interior space of the Tesla Model X Refresh 7-seater. Some of you are considering this for your own family and want to see if it'll work for your space needs. Let's see if we can answer that question for you today. One thing to note with these Falcon Wing doors is if it does not articulate to the height that you're wanting, what you can do, hold down this button, hear a beep, And the door will articulate to the highest point that's safe based on its ultrasonic sensors. So now that it's at the desired height, let's take a look at the inside. So as you can see, I have a kind of full car seat behind the passenger seat and it is secured through a tether system that comes with all the seats here in the second row. However, none of the seats in the third row have dedicated tether anchors. Uh, so let's take a closer look at these seats. Probably the first question that you have is, how do you get to the third row? There's a couple different ways. So kind of the, the easiest way is probably depressing the, the button here. I'm not sure if this comes out in the camera, but there's a little button here with a logo that's uh, imprinted on the leather. Press this, you'll hear an electromechanical release. The... Uh, seat folds down and if you need a little bit more space uh, to a little bit more leg room to position yourself back there you can use the manual release here pull that forward so you can see the seats go in the maximum forward position and you have a decent amount I wouldn't say decent but a reasonable amount of leg room for your passengers so I'm gonna step back here and see how it's like it's actually the first time that i've sat back here myself it's definitely not as comfortable as the the, the first or second rows but it it's it's a decent sized seat you'll notice that there's cup holders here there is an ac vent over here a couple of lights and you can see that my feet slide under the um second row not the most comfortable position but let's see how it's like when the uh, seat is actually folded. All right, so we've put up the second row while I'm still back here. Note, note that the second row seats are pushed forward a little bit more than if there was no one back here to accommodate the, the leg room back here. I'm about 5'7". I have, I don't know, two or three inches to the uh, back of the seat. So theoretically, someone could push this seat a little bit further back if we need more space in the second row. While I'm back here, you can notice the, uh, the tether anchors for the second row here, here, and here. More detail on the, on the seats. You'll notice that they're perforated. These are not ventilated, but they are breathable. So how do you fold these seats down? There's a little button here on the side. You hear the electro-mechanical release. Drops the um, headrest down. And now you have a fully flat area right here. You can fold one seat down and keep one up, or you can also fold both down. So let's release this seat as well. So again, press the button here. Here, electro-mechanical release. Drops the headrest. And now you have a Kind of an extended area in terms of the underfloor storage in the trunk let's lift this up and see what we have good amount of space back here you can probably fit a roller bag no problem if you pull this up you'll note that you have access to kind of a portion of the underfloor storage you can fit a charging cable or a j1772 adapter um yeah i've got a little microfiber and J1772 adapter back there, but um, not sure what that's going to be long term for uh, for us. So there's just some hooks here that you can use to fix a, a cargo net. So just going back to the second row, if you want to put it back in its original position, basically just press this button. Hear the electromechanical release. Push it back, and if you need to push this row further back, you can. Use the, um, the manual release lever here. 
So you, you pull this back, push the seat a little back, and now you have maximum leg room. So again, this is the, the manual release under the seat, and this adjusts your recline level here for the second row. And this is how the vehicle looks in the kind of the five seater configuration with the third row uh, folded down completely. And this is something that kind of is the highlight of the, the new refresh, but this, um, this screen allows for climate control for the rear. Uh, you can also control kind of seat heaters for the second and third rows. Not sure if that's coming out. Music, various uh, providers like uh, Netflix, YouTube, Disney Plus, Twitch, and Hulu. Uh, some volume controls here. You don't want this display accessible uh, while, while you're driving. You can disable this by going to the front screen. And touching this lock rear display button. So once that's engaged, you'll note that the rear display is blacked out and can only be enabled through the front screen again. So that's, that's useful if you want to limit the uh, amount of use that the display is getting. So in terms of other amenities in the uh, rear seats, you'll note that there are two USB-C ports back here for charging. Um, there's also a retract retractable um, cup holder. There's also a decent amount of underfloor storage beneath the passenger and driver seats, as you'll note here. So these bins are add-ons. Um, they're from Top Fit, and I'll, I'll put a link in the description below if you, you might find these useful. These are actually made for a Model Y, but they fit pretty well for, for Model X. I'm not sure if they're eventually going to come out with some for specifically for the Model X. It seems like they could, considering that this depression seems to be a bit bigger than the Model Y. Yeah, this one that we have underneath the passenger side has got some wipes. Definitely useful for kids. Uh, unfortunately, these do not have seat back pockets like you'd find in the, the Model 3 or the Model Y. In terms of lighting, the second row does have you know, three lights here, three LEDs. There's some speakers here on each side. So from a safety perspective, I would say that you need to be able to know the, whether your child is responsible enough at their age to be able to close these doors. But if you have a younger child, definitely take some care when you're closing these doors or maybe even situate the car seat in the center if you don't want them uh, interfering with the closure of the doors where they might um, injure themselves with the way that these doors close. These doors do have sensors, so they're not going to just completely close on you without checking, but they're also not foolproof. Just like any car door, you just wanna make sure that the pathway is clear before you close it, just to avoid any injuries. And th this is pretty obvious, but if you wanna close the door, you, there's a couple different ways. You can press this button right here, and it'll close. Or you can press uh, this red button. 